Welcome to Seabine, We the People. I'm Linda Forsyth, and today we have an interesting show because uh, all of us, as you all are aware, are pretty much in quarantine, lockdown, so to speak, into our homes. And what is interesting is some questions that uh, maybe you're just now starting to clue into. And that has to do with mm -hmm. what would happen if all of a sudden you all lost electricity. Now, what might be a problem just for a couple hours, it's not going to be any big deal, um, or even a couple of days, you know, people can get through that unless it's a major heat wave or it's, uh, you know, like freezing cold outside. So we're going to discuss today what would happen if it went out for a long period of time and how some things, interestingly enough, have been orchestrated to make you dependent upon the state like being all congested together into one great big city. So we're gonna talk about that. Now, in the meantime, I would like to bring to your attention that Seavine, which is we the people, all of us are donating our time to help bring you vetted information that is proven to be factual, it's investigated. In fact, that's what Seavine stands for, Community Voices, Investigations, News, and Education. So it's kind of like a community center where you can get the news and et cetera. So if you go to our website, so you are aware where we are at, at c-vine.com. You can see here on the screen, c-vine.com. And we have an entire news site because of hundreds of volunteers from We The People that are going out there and investigating the news. We have a lot of licensed investigators. These just aren't anybody that's doing this. Um, you know, very careful in exactly what we post and uh, how we vet and what we say is true. Uh, there are many other things on our website. We request that you please come here, become a member. Um, and also because everybody here is volunteers, nobody's getting paid, we do have overhead. We ask that you go ahead and consider uh, donating a monthly amount, you know, $5 a month, $10 a month. And they ask you that question once you sign up here on the upper right hand side of the page to become a member. Um, and when you log in and et cetera, or you create your, you register your, for your page, um, you can make that decision. And we even have a Seabine store where you can get, uh, you know, t-shirts and hats and masks uh, and et cetera that we have there for you. That's to help support us. Now, also, if you want to have conversations about all the different news that is happening right now on Facebook, we have some group pages where we have large community of people where we have discussions, not only about the latest breaking news, we even have debate. Uh, a lot of us are working together to help investigate the news to find out what's true and what isn't. Um, so if you go to on the group page, which is Seabine International News Network, the actual address is Seabine News Talk. That's the group page. Keep in mind, Facebook, we have multiple uh, groups. So that's the main news group. We have 27,000 people on there right now. And about 80% of them, they're pretty uh, uh, you know, up there in uh, being active with us, not only donating, but also being a member. And then also, if you're interested, we also have a Seabine Patriot Prayer Brigade on Facebook, which is a group in and of itself. Every Sunday, we have like a Bible study and, you know, Bible discussion. And uh, at the bottom, you mean comments, go ahead and put any prayer requests that you have down, either for yourself or your loved ones or your country. Um, and we have people from all over the world that come here and listen and, uh, you know, interact, uh, you know, read your prayer requests and pray for you. So it's definitely in two or more gathered in my name. Uh, there will I be, says the Lord. And so that's kind of a neat thing, plus also uh, a number of other things that we have there for your uh, prayerful entertainment. All right, let's go ahead. I want to introduce to you today my guest. My guest is Ron Ask. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so he can pop up. There you go, Ron. How you doing? Fine. How are you today? Oh, <laughs> great. Now, Ron is a very special guy to me. Ron is an elder law attorney, 
And he, a uh, very strong patriot, beautiful man of the Lord, uh, donated his time to create our foundation for sea buying, put it all together for us, made us legal. And, uh, and it helps us with many things, he and his uh, team that he has there. And he also is brilliant and uh, very, a lot of experience in what's going on in life and how to deal with things. He's on quite a few radio shows. Well, since he's pretty much in his own form of lockdown, courts aren't in session, um, it, I'm able to pretty much hold him hostage on our show. <laughs> So he could come and, and speak with us. So, Ron, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, and listen, the check's in the mail for that pitch that you uh, gave me there. That was great. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. We take all donations. So, with that being said, I mean, so much that you've given us, Ron. Uh, what we were talking about it was interesting you and i had a conversation on the phone and uh, you were telling me about you know various different people that you've hired uh right out of school all this uh education <laughs> so to speak that they're supposed to know exactly what they're doing when they come to you and we were talking about how a lot of them just haven't learned anything about a work ethic um it just an, an entire number of things going on. So we're not going to get into that so much today. I think it's pretty much self-evident. Um, there's a lot of things that have been going on just for design uh, with what, quite frankly, uh, the UN Agenda 30, 2030, and everything that's been happening, they've been um, purposely orchestrating, especially in California, to keep everyone together in close cities. And uh, it's very difficult. They make it almost impossible to have land that's rural. Uh, you know, all these fires are happening and et cetera. And so people are starting to get a little bit of an idea uh, because of this pandemic of just going to the store and getting uh, getting products and etc how quickly quickly all the shelves were cleaned out um that's what i want to talk to you about today ron now um we're we're a little bit a difference in age group but not by that much because i still remember you know, when i was younger a lot of things that we used to do that we don't do now so let's discuss this. When you went to school, what differences did you notice from when you went to school to what you're seeing are happening with kids now? Well, the, the biggest difference that I see is the, is the uh, total absence of, of the work ethic. Uh, we had opportunities as kids to, uh, to help out uh, Kids could have paper routes when they were, I don't know, 10, 11 years old or thereabouts. Uh, uh, we could mow lawns for the neighbors, maybe when we were seven or eight. Um, uh, I had my first job uh, away from home when I was 13. But when I was 10 years old, I was permitted to drive a farm tractor by myself, hauling a whole load of bales in from the field to the, to, uh, to, to the barn, okay, at age 10. Uh, I was perfectly capable of doing that. Today, there's insane labor laws, particularly in California. I don't know if they're nationwide, but insane labor laws that make it almost impossible for a youngster to, to be employed. I mean, it's just complete insanity. So kids are growing to be 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. And they've never held a meaningful job in their life because they're prohibited by law from doing so. It's, it's complete insanity and it's, it's the dependence, it's our, uh, it's the left wing who is, is uh, instilling or attempting to instill dependency. In other words, you obey what the government uh, tells you to do and the government's going to take care of you. Uh, it's a totally socialistic left wing uh, agenda and they're, it's working. They're, they're making it work. Uh, kids are not being taught right or wrong. Uh, they're taught, they're told that everything is relative. 
Uh, so they're not being taught resourcefulness. They're not being taught self-sufficiency. So they get to be 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, and they're helpless. They haven't a clue how to function out here in the, in the, uh, in the real world. A 17-year-old, a 17-year-old girl came to me the other day, and she said, I'd like to come to work for you. She said, I'll work for nothing as an intern. I just want to work eight hours a week so I can learn what it's like to work in an office like this. And I said, look, I, I, I could use somebody like you here, but I, I'll pay you. I don't want you to be here unpaid, so I'll pay you. And, but she says, well, if I do that, I got to get a work permit. I said, I know that, but it is what it is. I've never seen her again. I've heard from her, but the red tape she had to go through to get the work permit wasn't worth. This is a 17 year old for God's sakes. Do you realize that 17 year olds hit the beach at Normandy? 17 year olds hit the beach at Iwo Jima. George Bush senior that died recently was landing on an aircraft carrier at age 18 ducking bullets in dogfights with the Japanese. Uh, kids today aren't permitted to mature until they're, I don't know, 25 or 30. Complete insanity. Anyway, I'll shut up here. I'm talking too much. No, it's, it's very interesting what you're saying because, frankly, it's true. By design, there has been levels of entitlement that have been taught by doing little subtle things throughout school like Everybody's a winner when you're playing baseball or, you know, t-ball or whichever. There, there are no losers, so you get at least uh, a, a trophy for participation. Uh, you know, there's the safe spaces where they have in college that, oh, heaven forbid you have your feelings hurt or you are overwhelmed by, uh, you know, things that are happening in life. They have safe space rooms. It's like, oh, my God. Um, you know, it's... It's an ongoing, the sense of entitlement and the, uh, like you said, the lack of survival skills, everything is so dependent, so dependent on technology that if we lost technology for whatever period of time, we have probably two generations of people that are going to be, for the most part, not everyone, for the most part, clueless on what to do. You know, how many of them know how to, you know, make a campfire? How many know how to forage for water or various different types of food? Uh, when our grandparents were going through the Great Depression, they were able to um, get through it because especially if they lived out on a farm, they knew how to do things. They knew how to hunt. They knew how to do whatever it was they needed to do. So what you were talking about is very important. Um, there was a conversation today on, I read on Twitter, I forget the lady's name, but she's saying that we need to forbid homeschooling. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Forbid? It's the reverse, it's the reverse. We need to encourage all the homeschooling we can, we can encourage. The, uh, home, our schools are so totally corrupted that most people I talk to believe that they cannot be changed, that the schools are so irre irrevocably, irreversibly corrupted. And if we don't put massive amounts of kids into homeschooling, we're sunk. Yeah. Well, wasn't it um, um, Lenin, uh, Vladimir Lenin, that said, this is not verbatim, but the gist of it was, you know, give me your child for four years and I will have them for life. Well, they, they have indoctrinated our children for almost two generations. And where so many things are lost on how to do even the basics, it is, it is terrifying. Um, and that's why they're getting to the tail end of uh, this pandemic. I mean, there's a lot of things going on behind there. But we're starting to understand, I am hoping, because I think people are waking up, that they are seeing that if we are put into a socialist environment, well, that's what they're trying to do right now. Because if the trucking stopped and no one could uh, stock those shelves, if electricity went out, um, if water couldn't be pumped into your home, let's say for a long period of time, how quickly would you be dependent upon the state coming out to help you? 
boom, they put you into a socialist environment. <coughs> and then from there, it very soon goes into communism. So, you know, Ron, what, uh, what are the things that you think that kids, besides what you were talking about in learning a work ethic, need to do in order to be able to, you know, start living the right kind of life again, if for whatever reason technology goes? We have to take control of our schools again. Our, our schools have been totally taken over by the teachers union nationwide. Even the PTA is corrupted. The, the, the PTA has been co-opted. So we can't, the, uh, the, 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 the teachers union totally controls the legislatures in our state governments because they donate huge amounts of money. So the legislators are beholden to the teachers union. The teachers union dictates exactly what the curriculum is going to be. And if the teachers union doesn't get it all done, Planned Parenthood by statute now, by state law, Planned Parenthood can come in and dictate uh, what it's going to be. So we really have to revolt. We have to, uh, we have to, uh, uh, or, or get our kids. We've got to get our kids out of this environment. And, uh, and, and none of us are going to live long enough to fix the system. We got to get our kids out of there and homeschooling is the only either homeschooling or a good charter school, one or the other, uh, or parochial school, uh, or we're sunk. There's, a, there's no, in other words, I don't, I don't see any way to fix the system. Most people that I talk to that really know what's going on don't believe that there's a way to fix the, the school system. It is that corrupt. It is that totally corrupt. I, at one time, I had as high as a dozen interns here from UCR, University of California, Riverside. Uh, they were working here six, eight hours a week, uh, helping with little odds and ends in the office. Nice kids. These are A and B students, juniors and seniors. I finally came to the realization they couldn't read, they couldn't write, they couldn't punctuate, they couldn't spell, they couldn't construct a sentence. They could not convey a thought in a one paragraph message or letter. They, uh, it was impossible to teach them the skills that I have to have in an office because they lacked the basics. And the, the school was actually corrupting them. The school was teaching them to be uh, dependent. Uh, they, weren't, they were no more, more prepared for the real world than the man on the moon. Well, that, unfortunately, and I realize there's going to be people that disagree with me, but if you have seen what was and in comparison to what is going on now, uh, you're basically being told how to think, how to act, how to move forward um, in life, um, it just everything that you need to do, even uh, moving forward and uh, everything having to do with technology. There really is very little that's being taught in like um, a machine shop or auto mechanics or you know how to sew or even home ec they used to have in schools you know a lot of other uh, things that they used to teach are not being taught anymore because we're becoming so dependent on electricity on everything that's going on with this so with that being said, interestingly enough, when you were talking about that the school system, public school system, I should clarify, yes. is so <clears throat> broken, I have a feeling, and you, you tell me if you think I'm right or wrong, but I have a feeling this pandemic and taking our kids out of school and quite frankly seeing some things that we never noticed before, I'm really wondering how much it's ever going to go back to the way it was. I have a feeling it's not going to. I think uh, the day that they shut those schools down was the beginning of a new direction coming on over time, even after they open up the economy. I don't know, because uh, school isn't going to start again until September. What do you think? First of all, they want to separate our children from the parents. They want to totally separate them from the parents. 
they want to, uh, uh, they actually believe that the, that the, our, as parents, we are incapable of, of, of raising our, our kids. Now, when you see all these food lines outside of the schools now that were shut down, we've come to the realization that apparently half the population depends on the school system to feed the kids. So apparently we we're not even feeding our kids anymore when you see these huge huge lines of people in cars lined up they're driving thirty thousand dollar cars in line <coughs> waiting for a handout i mean this is insanity this is complete insanity we've become we've, we're totally uh totally dependent and of course that's what they want they want us to become totally dependent they want us to look to the state now to governor newsom wants to feed all the the, the seniors now it, that's 16 bucks a day for breakfast 17 bucks a day for lunch and 28 bucks a day for dinner now you round that off it's a little over 60 dollars a day per senior and there's 5.7 million of us in the state of california so that's 360 million dollars a day to make the seniors dependent on the state um, uh, I mean, it, every day that goes by, it gets more and more insane. Well, that's just that's just the food aspect of things. You're not even looking at health care. So let's look at how socialism could very quickly go to communism and complete and total absolute other utter tyranny. How long do you think, especially with health care, and they're already doing this now, in other countries that have socialized medicine, there's only so much money to go around in for every single senior that goes into the hospital for X period of care. So once it goes to a certain point, then it's a matter of, okay, so when do we just let the senior go? We're wasting- If I, if I may, in, in Britain, for example, or France, if you're a senior and you need a procedure, I don't know what, uh, heart valve or whatever the case may be, they calculate the amount of life expectancy that this is going to increase. So if it's going to cost X number of dollars for X number of months of life expectancy, if it's too much, they give you some aspirin and send you home. And I, I actually had people come in my office and tell me that. A lady said her, her 95-year-old aunt was dehydrating. All she needed was liquid. And <clears throat> I said, sorry, 95-year-olds, we it isn't going to increase your life expectancy enough. Here's some aspirin, go home and die. This is what, when they talk about death panels, they really have death panels. Remember the kid that in Great Britain, there was doctors in New York that wanted to help this kid. Uh, and they, they were going to do it for nothing. And somebody was going to pay for his flight. The British government declined to allow the parents to take that kid to New York, even free. Everything was free. They said, no, he's got to die. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is the way it is. So in Canada, you wait a year for an MRI. In the United States, you wait an hour. Okay, so people die waiting for the, for the uh, MRI. They, wait, die, they die waiting for the, uh, for the procedure. This is what you get. And unfortunately, it gets even worse as more and more people are on socialized medicine because then people, because it's quote unquote free, go in for anything and everything under the sun. And uh, the people that um, really need emergency are just pushed farther back uh, many times, uh, whether it's triage or whatever the case is, uh, they really will be even getting less than the care that they did before. So what we're going what we're basically um, going into here, Ron, is explaining how more and more and more we're being placed by design, by design, in a situation where they have re rerouted everything in all different aspects of our life that all culminate together where we are ultimately going to have to be dependent upon the state to survive. We're all bunched together in cities. So if we lost all electricity and water couldn't come through, how many people have their own wells? 
how many people can uh, survive right now with food they have planted in their yard? Oh, in California, you can't do that. You can't plant your own food in, uh, you know, any large amount, et cetera. You know, zoning laws. What about rainwater? <laughs> My son um, has a place where he had, he, they just placed a couple of barrels and et cetera under where rainwater could go in there, which is what they used to do. It's not anything new. And he was reported and cited for, for um, capturing rainwater. Now, I could go on and on and on about all the different laws and state sanctioned, this is the way it needs to be because it's for our own good, is absolute utter BS. Because once it comes down to it, if something doesn't go quite right, we're screwed. We are absolutely screwed. And so we have to be dependent upon the state. And it's from there that vice gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And the amount of resources become lower and lower and lower. And so where did they cut off the fringe in order to have enough for the rest? And ultimately, people are living in such fear they can't speak out because they will then be <clears throat> possibly lose whatever stiffened that they get, whatever the case is. And that is how things move towards absolute disaster. And that's how close we are. That's how close we are. Ron, what would you suggest or what do you think um, we could be doing right now, right this moment, even under quarantine, what do you think we could possibly be doing? We have to do anything we can do to become more self-sufficient. It depends on some of us have the resources, some of us don't. I mean, for those of us that can afford to buy a, a generator, a portable generator, uh, we need to do that. I mean, you're looking at probably a minimum of, I'm going to guess, 2500 bucks. I don't know what they cost, but I'm going to But guess generators that. have to run on diesel fuel or whatever. That's right. Fuel. I understand so. that. Uh, so there's dependency no matter how you look at it. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, the we've got to focus on throwing these politicians out of office. We've got to find candidates that are willing to stand up to them. And we've got to support them and back them up uh, and, and get them into office. Uh, we have a, a complete, uh, the, 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 the people in Sacramento here are, are I mean, are, are horrible. I mean, these people are passing laws that are complete insanity. The, uh, was it B5 or A5, whatever it was, that, Nobody could be a private contractor anymore. I mean, this is complete insanity. This is done to completely stamp out the, the small uh, business person yeah. and make everybody dependent on, on uh, the government or, 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 or the, big, uh, the, the big corporations. I mean, uh, uh, you can't be a musician. You can't be a, a writer. You can't be a plumber. You can't be an electrician. Uh, you've got to... You've got to uh, seek employment with the government or, 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 or a large corporation. Uh, this is the type of horrible, horrible laws that are being uh, passed right and left, and we're standing by and allowing it to, to happen. Standing by and allowing them, the words of the day. Standing by and allowing them. Right now, during this pandemic, when you were just talking about the, the, you know, where we have to be reliant on the state, well, have you noticed the only things that are staying open, like Walmart, Target, Amazon.com, great big, huge conglomerations, and other absolute essentials, just a couple, not enough, but you know, absolute other you know, things for essentials. But we have to go to these great big uh, in places that have all these these other things right there. Now, let me see. What happens if places like Walmart and Target all of a sudden are state-sanctioned and that's where you can go to get your stuff? Because all 
of the small businesses went out of business because of this pandemic. Do you think that possibly could be part of a plan, part of a design to absolutely, it's not just a matter of destroying the economy, it's destroying the entire, you know, small business. Uh, well, what, what do you think happened to the, that initial $350 billion? That was gone in just a few days. Do you th seriously think that that the, all these uh, small restaurants that closed up got any of that money? No. There was the lobbyists in, in, uh, in, in uh, Washington, D.C. were standing in line, and it all went, I mean, $350 billion dollars of our tax money that they collected from you and me, it all went to big corporations, every bit of it. There's no way in the world that, that those funds were distributed to the little guy. They all went, that it happened overnight, like in three or four days. It was, it was supposed to be through the SBA, the Small Business Association, yeah. which is under what, 50 employees? Do I have that right? Um, you know, what's considered a small business, but all these corporations or businesses they gave to were uh, not all of them but most of them were publicly traded that is mm -hmm. not a small business That's right and so everything you're right everything was gone i actually interviewed um janelle um janelle who is the owner of rainbow oaks restaurant in rainbow california and she was after she was told to shut her doors she immediately went for that uh, stimulus, um, you know, the, for paychecks and et cetera. And because she immediately did it, she actually did receive the loan. But that was because she was there practically when the doors opened. Um, when she got the money into her account one month later, that's when she said that uh, two weeks earlier, they had run out of money. So it took them two weeks, two weeks to go through all that and give it to a limited number of large corporations. That's another clue, people. They're trying to kill off the small business owner. And it's actually been going on for a very long time. When you look at things like Walmart, a lot of small businesses couldn't keep up um, and be able to cover their overhead and uh, have the uh, same amount of sale prices that Walmart could because they could buy things in bulk. It's slowly been happening for a very long time, and we're seeing the very tail end of this. So what I was trying to get from you, Ron, we are home now in this pandemic. We are quarantined. What can we, the people, do right now, right this minute? What can we start doing to start turning this around? We got the time. We, we need to learn every technique in the world to become more and more <coughs> independent. In other words, if uh, <coughs> we, uh, I think we need to stock up on non-perishable non food. In other words, we need to have a garage full of food that doesn't require uh, refrigeration. Uh, we need to uh, acquire uh, camping gear. I mean, we need to acquire uh, the means of uh, of uh, literally cooking open over an open fire, so to speak, of uh, boiling water. Know how to do that if they didn't have a microwave? <laughs> I'm sorry. Go well, ahead. yeah, I'm just going to say it's. I, I fortunately grew up as a kid. I uh, up until the time I was four years old, I lived in a village of about 150 people. My parents had the only refrigerator in town. People would come to the door up till nine or 10 o'clock at night and knock, knock on the door and ask if they could come in and see the thing. It, it was a, like a seventh wonder of the world. Uh, we had one of a handful of telephones. But people honestly were pretty happy. People survived, people functioned without all the gadgets, with all the, without all the, the hardware and software and, and uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, now we become, we're, we're totally uh, dependent. When I was a kid, I could, I could repair my own car. I don't have the means to repair my own car anymore. I have to take it to somebody that's hooked up to the computer and, and uh, has all the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the technology. Uh, we've allowed ourselves to become totally 
uh, dependent, and we just others. we just have to work at becoming uh, self uh, sufficient. But one of the things we have to do, and it'll take a while, we've got to get rid of the politicians that are in power and put our own people in there, people that we can trust to turn the thing around and and uh, and not make us. Our legislatures in this state have totally destroyed the building industry. In other words, uh, if you're going to build a new house right now, you're going to spend at least $100,000 before you ever dig a spade full of earth. In other words, 100 bucks in insane uh, iron rental studies and so on and so forth. This is before you ever dig a foundation. That's 100 grand, right? And you've got all kinds of zoning laws that throw uh, uh, blocks in, in, in front of you. There's developers, for example, that are trying to develop a huge uh, expanse of foams between Paris and San Jacinto uh, along that corridor there. They've been trying for years to get that thing approved, but the environmentalists and everybody else have blocked them, and they've had, they've had to cut the size of that development down probably in half so the price of those houses are going to be way beyond the reach of the average uh, uh, wage earner, not because the carpenters are getting too much money or the, or the uh, ready-mix guys are getting too much or the roofing guys are getting too much or the plumbers are getting too much. No, it's all going to, to uh, roadblocks that the legislatures have, mm -hmm. have, uh, have, uh, have uh, put into place. I, I've I've seen the figures. The the, the the city of Culver City complied with this uh, thing where you got to build uh, affordable housing. Seven hundred thousand bucks per unit. This is affordable housing now. These are little cracker box places, right? Seven hundred thousand bucks per unit. I don't blame the people in the city of Culver City. They're just trying to obey the law that our governor or legislature laid down to, to, to build this, this is affordable housing now. This is how insane it is. Well, I think what you're saying here is absolutely right on track. Um, we have come close to the end of our time here right now, but I would like to close by saying something that I have noticed that I think is really good. Even though we're on uh, some pretty strong quarantine here in California, I see families going out and taking walks. They've stopped it where you, can, you can't go to the park. In fact, they filled one of the uh, skateboard parks, the beach, in with sand so the kids wouldn't go there to skateboard. They don't want you even alone on your fishing boat or out in the middle of nowhere um, on a surfboard with no one around you out in the ocean. That's not allowed here in California right now. So there's something more going on here than, than what, I mean, if you're not seeing it, I'm, I'm sorry, that's, <sighs> you're gonna probably have a really rude awakening here pretty quick. But in the meantime, spending time with your family, teach your daughters how to knit. If you don't know how to knit, you still got the internet, go on YouTube. There are things there that it can show you. Learn, how, I mean, teach your kids how to do something like wood shop, or uh, even how to build a campfire, or how to do camping in your backyard. You know, there's all sorts of different things and different skills that if you have not been teaching your children to use, hey, you've got time now. You guys are together. It's a family type of environment to start taking the time and teach your children what to do if for whatever reason, technology stops. And you know what? If I were a dictator of a different company or country and I wanted to take down a country quickly, let's use a little mm -hmm. deductive reasoning. There's already things in place that can take out our electricity for a long period of time. And it's already happened periodically in large, large swatches. So if you don't think it's possible, it's, uh, <laughs> you're in denial. 
it is very possible. And you should always have those skills anyway. This is not gloom and doom. This is just plain common sense. That's all this is. So Ron, thank you again for coming on here. We're gonna have you on, on a weekly basis to have discussions. And um, I think things are gonna be turning around a little bit that all us um, boomers and geezers, <laughs> etc coming together are going to probably wind up teaching our young'uns a few things that they're going to have um, a certain amount of learning curve that they're going to have to go through whereas boomers and geezers had to learn how to use technology which we're still learning to do a lot of us or whichever let's let's see what happens when things are reversed a little bit you're going to find out that you know what maybe we need each other Maybe we need each other. Well, okay. Thank you very much for joining us today. And we will be back on next Saturday. Good day, everybody. Thanks, Linda. <laughs> Take care. I know.